and welcome everybody. I am Nico the Legend, also known as the Well-Mannered Teenager, the Snowflake, and the Rambling Idiot. And today's video is going to be something more along the lines of fun. Yes, we get to find out about Mass Effect 2 and what cut characters were cut. That pretty much sums it up. I thought it'd be fun to do this kind of video because we've been talking about well, pretty much all of the uh, Legendary Edition for the past, oh geez, I don't know, almost half a year ago, half a year so far. So I thought it'd be nice to do a little tidbit of information that has really nothing to do with that and kind of give you a video that just adds more to things that you might not have known and it'd be kind of cool to know. Although, this might make you a little sad because some of the characters that they were going to put in here were pretty awesome, but it's understandable why they didn't put them in at the end of the game, or in the, you know, end of the game's development. You know, they had to cut it out. Alright, so, here we go. We're going to read this article together, and then we're going to discuss it afterwards, and you guys can let me know down below how you feel about these characters that were cut. And did you, would you want them in there, or would you rather have other people put in or cut out? Let me know, and also, Nico Legend would appreciate any type of subscriptions or follows or likes or dislikes, or whatever you guys want to do on the channel, much appreciated. Anyway, let's get this going. So, this article is from Game Rant. Uh, I know a lot of people probably have some strong opinions about Game Rant, but that's pretty much all that I get for feed on my, on my phone and stuff when I'm just scrolling through different gaming news. I guess that's my fault for just going into one article. Thanks, algorithms. So, Bioware's Mac Walters reveals cut Mass Effect 2 characters. Alright, let's get right into it. Party members are arguably the main attraction for many Bioware fans. Mass Effect 2 is no exception, featuring 12 recruitable squad members counting DLC. And a lot of them are pretty badass. That's more than any other game in the series, but there were plenty of companions that never made it off the drawing board. So, Bioware's Mac Walters discussed this in a recent video on GameSpot's YouTube channel. As a lead writer for Mass Effect 2, he talked about characters that never made it into the game in early drafts of fan favorites. Alright, pay attention, this is where it gets good. The video's focus is an early design document where the writers hammered out their vision for the 12 party members. Or, as Walters calls them, Mass Effect 2's Dirty Dozen, which would have been pretty sweet, actually. As Walters explains, the team thought it was essential for players to care about their followers in Mass Effect 2. It is the only game in the series where the player can potentially get their whole squad killed, and Bioware wanted the player to feel it. And, oh my god, you definitely feel it. The suicide mission is one of the most genius missions and just in terms of role-playing mechanics and character design and story that I've ever seen in a game before. According to Walters, Bioware's writers threw everything at the wall to see what stuck. One that didn't stick was the crazy Corian King. That's right, another Corian. A Corian in their 30s or 40s, this character would approach Commander Shepard shortly after arrival on the Corian migrant fleet. They would then whimsically offer to join the team. The Corian King or Queen, since the character sheet doesn't specify gender, was inspired by the crazy Irishman from Braveheart. Like the Irishman, this Corian would be motivated by avenging their dead friends and family. Also, like the Irishman, it seems to have driven them mad, but the fun kind of mad. The three pitch dialogue lines spell it out perfectly. Will I get to kill Geth? Yes, you get to kill Geth. Excellent. Other proposed but discarded Corians included the Corian Rogue and Cordial Smuggler. The description of the former gives us strong James Bond vibes. Meanwhile, the latter comes across as an alien version of Kasumi Goto from the Stolen Memory DLC. The doc itself describes him, him or her as a fusion of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker. Speaking of Kasumi, her character evolved from a human space pirate known as the Space Jacker. She and Shepard would race to steal an important item, with the Space Jacker ultimately allowing Shepard to win. The pitch also suggested she was trying to steal the Leviathan. One assumes Leviathan refers to, to the derelict Reaper from Mass Effect 2. That would certainly be an ambitious prize, if nothing else. And then uh, the Leviathan DLC in Mass Effect 3 was badass. Walters also drew attention to number 16 on the list, the Mad Bomber. The document describes his character as a demolition savant who's just crazy enough to join in on a suicide mission. To recruit them, Shepard would have to break into secret facilities to steal the best bombs for the operation. The document compares her personality to Mel Gibson's character in Lethal Weapon. The Mad Bobber never made it into the game. Still, Walters notes that Bioware incorporated elements of this character into party members Jack and Zaid. Aha! They're like, they're like spiritual successor characters. It's kind of funny. Walters points out that very few of these pitches were either wholly embraced or rejected. Instead, many merged, split, and redefined over time. 
Even returning characters like Garrus and Tally have all their roles in the story change. The document also describes early versions of other Mass Effect 2 characters such as Miranda, Thane, and Grunt. Bioware's writers referred to the latter as the Design A Krogan, and his description implies Shepard would have a much more significant role in influencing his development. This is just tip of the iceberg though, and Walters only touches on a fraction of proposed characters. He also notes that now that this video is out there, fans will likely start clamoring for some of these cut characters to show up in future Mass Effect games. Given some of the great but unused ideas the writers came up with, it's easy to understand why. Now, that's pretty cool, right? So we got an idea of how awesome this game could have been even further. But, you know, who's to say that, you know, you put in the Mad Bomber character and maybe Jack wouldn't be in the game or, or Zaid, you know. So <clears throat> they only had to, they, they had many options and they tried to figure out which would stick to the game's narrative as best as possible. Uh, a Corian King, I could see that not being in there just because we already have Tally as the Corian, you know. I mean, I, I, there's no problem having two Corians since there's multiple humans in your party. But maybe they wanted to just have, you know, a character from each race. For the, I mean, for the most part. Um, of course, I never want Tally or Garrus to be replaced. Um, but it's cool to see that these guys from Bioware were just trying to, trying to invent these really hardcore badasses, you know, for you to check out these dossiers of the characters. Because pretty much all the characters you recruit are all pretty dark characters. Uh, Thane is an assassin, so that, I just thought that was pretty awesome. I mean, Garrus is the Archangel, just sniping foes in the head, protecting himself. That was a great reveal, by the way. Um, so, you, you know, all these guys have some, like, twisted stuff going on, or some dark events playing out in the game. So that's why people like Mass Effect 2 so much. It is the darkest of the three. Or the most Blade Runner sci-fi? I don't know. I mean... Three is pretty pretty dark in its own right because of Reapers destroying massive uh, accounts of people and civilizations, but that's you know that's that's just surface level, right? <laughs> that's depressing as that sounds. Mass Effect Two really dives deep into the, the to the darkness of the of the universe and all that. Anyway, guys, I just thought I'd read that to you. It's just fun to know of what was going into Mass Effect Two and its development. And, uh, you know, now you know. You got some ideas. As I mentioned before, feel free to let me know if you thought these characters should have made it into the Mass Effect 2 game or what would be seeing them in the future Mass Effect games to come. And what characters did you not want in there, you know? Maybe the characters that we got in our group already were just... Some of them were like, eh, we could have just cut them out and put one of these in there. All right, I've been your host, Nicola Legend, also known as the one Manor Teenager, the Snowflake, and the Rambling Idiot. And I hope you did enjoy, folks. I know I do when I'm learning more about one of the best trilogies of all time. Well, that legacy will be tested in the months to come, won't it? See you later, Pathfinder.